Is it Joe Hanningsmeyer? <laughs> so, I just wanted to go ahead and start off with saying that as a 20 year old, I turned 20 this summer, and I have all the answers. <laughs> so, so I don't know what you all have been doing, but <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So, I always want to make sure that I'm humbling myself before I get up here to talk. Every time I, every time I do, I, it's been a while. It's been a little while. Um, I'm very thankful that Sam took over last youth Sunday and had all that together because I was not in the right place uh, to be doing that at that time. So, um, but I don't, I don't have all the answers. I just know what what I experience. And so, this morning I have a question that I'm going to try to answer. It's it's pretty simple, um, and you all already know the answer. But I'm going to try to take you on a little bit of a journey and kind of share some of my testimony about my perspective on, on this topic. Um, so my question today is, when do we need God? When, when do we need God? Do you want to, do you want to answer it? Oh, me? Yeah, go ahead. 24/7. All the time. <laughs> all right. All right. So if you're like Mammal and you said all the time, then you can go ahead and leave. Because... <laughs> You're all good. You got it all. So, so, definitely, yeah. yeah this is fun. <laughs> so, anyways, I would like to still talk about some some experience that I've had in the last last two two years, I guess, um, going off to college and being away from my my family, from my my church, my group, um, is definitely very trying, and so. I, haven't, I don't think I've talked since since I left for college, and so still there's still a lot of experiences you know left. I still got two more years, but I just kind of want to give a, I guess a little update of like where I'm at, you know, where what I'm thinking about. Um, and like Mom said, I, I kind of had this revelation earlier on in the summer. Um, I kind of felt you know ready to share. I, like I, I got it all. You know, I was sitting in my car. I was driving to work. Uh, I had like a 30-minute drive to work every you know there and back this summer. And so I had, I, I was just talking out loud. I was just talking to God and, and I was like saying all the, all the things and I was like, I got it. I, I'll, I'll just say it next Sunday. And then, I, I, you know, so, so through all the fog, I tried to write down some notes to, to follow and I'll try to follow them loosely and veer off a little bit and come back so uh, that we might be able to, get, you know, but we'll still get out of here pretty early. So, so this, this story starts um, earlier this summer when I had the, had this, revelation about how like when I was growing up and I realized that all of throughout my childhood my I, I always kind of depended on other people's faith and their their dependence on God whenever they needed God um, and so whenever I had anything that went wrong whenever I was sick whenever there was something going on at school I always had my family and my church family to kind of back me up right and I, I could just piggyback off of their faith um, and so it, I never had a point in my life where I needed God just for me and there was nobody else. Right? And so as you can kind of see, um, whenever I left for college, I kind of had to figure out you know, what, how I could believe for myself. Um, and while I know that I, that I was getting tons of prayer from, from my mom and my mammal, um, and I'm sure from some, from some of you as well, um, they, were, they were helping me figure that out, but I needed to figure out for myself. Um, and so, take you through college a little bit. Um, I got to I got to Rose Holman. Uh, it's in Terre Haute. It's about two and a half hours away. And I joined the joined the cross country team at Rose. And one of the like it, it was a lot of fun. There's a lot of people. I was meeting people my own age, and we were having fun all all communal together. We all had a lot of uh, same values and ideas. Um, but there's people come from a lot of different backgrounds. You know, you have people that um, are Christians who will act like Christians, and you got people who are, are Christians and won't act like Christians, and you got people who act kind of like Christians some of the times, but they're not, you know, they're just good people. I and mean, then you got the people who aren't Christians and act like they're not Christian. Um, <laughs> I met, made a few of those people as well. Um, and so, well, I, I'll, share, I'll share this story. I went to, um, I, I think it was uh, around homecoming, as I was getting ready to know all these, all these, um, these upperclassmen, they were all these cool people. We got, we had this big homecoming bonfire. That was a big school-wide event. Um, and then after the homecoming bonfire, uh, we got, I got a text message, and they were, they were all talking about this. They said, "Hey guys, 
we're going to have this team goal setting session. We're going to we're going to like come together. We're going to bring our training logs. We're going to write it all out, and we're going to talk about our goals for the conference. Um, like you know, run, like running. It's going to be very running oriented. Coaches are going to be there, but like you know, like you all should come to this off campus apartment, and we're going to have on, on homecoming the night before the homecoming football game. <laughs> And, and so, if you can imagine, um, I, I drove. I drove a few of my friends over there, and we, you know, we all brought our train logs. Um, and you know, I was very naive to, to think that we were actually going to be setting goals. Uh, and so we get there, and it was not not anything like I expected. I think one of my friends he knew completely. He he, he just didn't tell me. Um, <laughs> and so I realized pretty quickly um, that that was not that was not my place. You know, that's not where I wanted to be. Um, but there was nobody. There was nobody there telling me no, don't go to this. You know, there was nobody, my, my family wasn't going to be like, hey, Isaac, this, this is just a bad idea. You shouldn't be going to this. Um, and so, you know, I, I stuck around for a little bit, um, and I didn't want to, I didn't want to draw back and be like, no, I can't do this because I'm, I'm a Christian. I have to go home. I can't do this. Any of this. Um, so I, I stayed for a little bit, and then I, I went ahead and left um, quicker than, you know, what everybody else was going to do. But I saw that a lot of the people that on the team that I had known that were Christian and and were you know uh, raised up in a, or they went to like a, a like Catholic high school and things like that and people that I thought that were going to be be my group people that I could relate with um, they were kind of gallivanting and carrying on like uh, like there was no tomorrow and so you know, my place um, so it kind of shifted my mindset from further away from how I grew up. Um, and I started thinking about what it means to, um, like what my testimony is about. Because my whole life I grew up, you know, just doing the right things because I was told to do the right things, not because of how, not because I felt like the wrong, like, because I knew what the wrong things were. Um, and it's kind of like what Samantha said um, this summer at Youth Sunday. You know, her, her story was, you know, growing up in church, you know, I never got, never got addicted to, to drugs or became an alcoholic or any of these bad things that, I, that God could pull me away from. Um, and so you, you kind of feel like, what's the, like, if you're just doing good things, and, you know. <laughs> no, it's all good. Yeah, of course. They do that. I'm not near that cute, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the I know the know the philosophy. You know that that you don't want to continue to to live in sin just so that God can pull you out of it. We, I know I know that's not true. But during my freshman year, I was I was pretty close to that edge. I think you know of understanding. Hey, I'm in college. People in college they they live like they're in college. You know you're supposed to do these things. That's what my, all my friends were telling me. Some of these people were saying. You just, you just go live, you know, like, this is why you're here. Um, and, and I was really kind of just torn. I was like, I really could go one way or the other and, and not feel bad about going either direction. Um, because I know that God will give me grace, right? And so it was kind of a dangerous, dangerous thought, dangerous road to walk down, of course. Um, but I knew that was wrong. I did know that was wrong. Um, if you want to pull up Romans 6.1, I think this is my mom's favorite scripture, or at least one of them. Um, <laughs> What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin so that grace may increase? Oh, can you get number 62 up there as well? May it never be. Um, yeah, I forgot I forgot to write that on the list. But um, may it never be. Um, and and so through all, I want I'm really glossing over a lot of the a lot of the facts here because I I didn't realize any of this this stuff that I'm writing down I didn't realize any of this till this summer really. So I'm not like I'm not sitting there at home thinking, oh, Romans six six two says, may it never be. I need to need to think about all this. Um, but the, you know these are these are things that I've heard growing up, and they're just they're just in me somewhere. I'm not thinking about them up here. I'm I'm thinking about them here. And so, so you know, we're uh, I was trying to figure these things out. Um, man, I'm moving really fast. I'm already halfway through my notes. This is crazy. <laughs> okay. We're getting to the good part. So last year, um, I came home uh, for the summer, you know, and I got, got back into the comfort of my people, my home. This is where, this is where I'm at. And it really made me realize, oh, and then, then leaving back again to go back to Rose, I, I, that's where I really started to notice the, the big difference between how I lived whenever I was at home and, like, how I lived a completely different personality whenever I was at, at Rose. Um, 
and it was like it was like two different people and it was getting like it was getting tiring because i was like i don't want to be like i can't be two people you know i have to be i have to be me who is that who's that going to be is that going to be college life for now and then are we going to you know come back to home and be like oh i'm, I'm better now i'm gonna i'm gonna live you know all out for god right now no no i have to i have to figure this out and so you know i i had to i noticed the difference in what i was acting and it was a lot of fun to be at rose and i was having a lot of fun hanging out with people there um it made me think of the billy joel song um <laughs> he says he says I'd rather laugh with the sinners and cry with the saints because the sinners are much more fun. Um, and he, he's, he's, you know, <laughs> he knew what he was talking about. Some, in some cases, yeah, you know, and he kind of has a point. Um, and that's what it makes you think. But I knew that was wrong too. Um, <laughs> and so, hmm, I ended that really quickly. I must have had something. Whenever I write down my notes, I, I'm always thinking of something and it makes sense and there's a train. But then I'll forget to write down, and I'll like take, take, take out a train car, and then they don't connect anymore. And... <laughs> I know. Well, he figures it out. He he manages pretty well. Um, so I knew, but I knew this was wrong to to live in in the in the double world there. Um, so last last winter, things got uh, pretty difficult. You know, classes were tough. Um, I think I, I was kind of just in and out of, you know, sick and just general sickness that I've never, never really dealt before with, you know, um, a lot of times it was just like, you know, I'd get a, get a runny nose and then, or I, I just wouldn't, wouldn't get sick because I knew healing was there and it existed. Um, but I think, I think looking back, I kind of realized I got sick a few times and I kind of just kept God at arm's length. I was kind of just, I didn't want to, I didn't want to get all in because I liked I liked how I was living. I didn't want to change. And so I figured that if I asked God to come in and, and change, like come in and help me out with all the difficult things and, and cry with the saints, then he would also affect, you know, he would also take me away from all the sinners. Um, full circle, back to Billy Joel. <laughs> yeah, thanks. A lot of, so a lot of um, one scripture that I've, come back to a lot. Uh, we read this book in high school um, called R12. Or it was, um, I can't remember what the book was called anymore, but it was all about Romans 12. Um, so if you want to pull that scripture up. Um, Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, Therefore I urge you as brethren by the mercy of God to present your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Um, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We will prove the will of God is and that it is good and acceptable and perfect. Um, and so I knew that if I wanted to full on commit and, and, you know, walk in God's goodness and his healing and all this, then it was going to change me. <laughs> it was going to, you know, I would have to, I would have to go all in. Um, and I was struggling with that because, you know, I was like, oh, well, can't I just play both sides? To, can I not, can I just play, play both sides? Um, and so it was, it was around Christmas time last year that I finally just, I kind of just broke. Um, and I decided that I needed to, I think I talked to, um, to Becky whenever I was getting a haircut and she's like, she's like, are you, are you finding a church there? And I'm like, I'm like, well, I had a church and then I kind of really, and we're usually running on Sunday mornings anyways. And, um, and so she, she kind of pushed me to go find a church. And so here we go. I'm going back to, back to Terre Haute, um, in January. I'm trying to look for this church, um, and so I, I do not like church hunting. I've never had to go church hunting. Um, I've always only ever had one church, <laughs> um, but I managed to find um, this one. It was the first one I found. I just looked up, looked up a church on my phone, and, and found a pretty uh, small church, kind of just out in the middle of nowhere. Um, it was called New Hope Church, um, and it was interesting because so I, I went. I went the first first Sunday there, and it was really nice, and all the people were, were really loving there, and they were really kind, um, and I was like, okay, that, that was nice, all right, I like that, and so then I went back again the next Sunday, and after that, I was like, okay, this is, I don't want to go looking around anymore, I think I found the place, so I wanted to sit down with the pastor, his, his uh, name is Pastor Dave, and so 
I said, I was like, I was, I texted him. I was like, hey, Pastor Dave, can I uh, meet up with you for coffee or something like that? Can we, can we talk at the church or at your house or however, however that works? And so he said, sure, like, you, you know, when do you want to come over? So I went over to his house on a Wednesday afternoon after I got done with classes, um, before I had to go back for running practice. And we kind of just sat down and had coffee. And we talked about, I, I kind of had to lay out, I wanted to lay out for him, you know, where I was coming from. Um, and then get to know him better and get to understand what he believed. Because, you know, I, I could wait around and go, you know, all, all, all the Sundays and eventually figure it out. But I wanted to just get straight to the source, you know. Take me, take me from day one. Where, who are you, you know? And here's who I am. And it was really interesting because I had to, for the first time ever, explain to someone who I was and what I believed. And they had no idea who my parents were <laughs> or what church I had came from. You know, they, they had no idea. So I learned a lot about myself and what I believed. Um, I learned that I believed in a, in a lot of grace, you know, I believed, I believed in a lot of grace because I'd have been taught a lot of grace. Um, and he kind of had a different perspective. Um, it wasn't, it, he, he believed in grace as well, um, but he wanted me to, to believe in the Bible as well. He said, he said, I don't want to change who you are because he's like, you're going to be here for a short time. You know, you're going to go back home in the summer. Um, and, and you, you know, I don't know when you're going to be back, but... <laughs> He said, but he said, I don't want to, I don't want to go against what you've been taught and what you've been raised because you're going to go back to your church and, you know, you need to, you need to believe things for yourself. You know, I can't just take you away from who you were and make you into who we want you to be. Um, he said, so I want you to be able to, he's like, I will be able to show you anything that I'm saying. I want to, I'll show, I'll back it up with what's in the Bible. And so that was, that was really interesting uh, to me because he was, he was good about that. He, he was very logical, a very logical pastor. He he would um, read, read a scripture and he okay, let's dive deeper into this and break it all down. So, um, so I think that was the right place for me in that, in that time was to go there and to, to understand, okay, well, I need to actually be reading the Bible more. You know, I, I kind of been, I kind of been just going to, going to church and just understanding it. You know, it's been what I've been taught from day one. Um, but I didn't read a whole lot. I didn't read the Bible a whole lot. So he kind of gave me this, uh, this list and it was all right around the time that you also started your, um, what you've been doing, where you've been doing your thing. So um, he gave me a, a separate separate list. And so I started reading that. I started in Mark and made it through a little bit. And, and then I started just kind of branching out. And so I tried to, try to start good habits um, and just reading the Bible more. Um, let's see. Where am I at here? Um, and so, yeah. So I started to read the Bible a little bit more. And unsurprisingly, that changed my thought process from day to day. Um, it's kind of funny how that works. If you, if you feed yourself a little bit of the good stuff, then you'll, you know, you'll start to experience more of the good stuff. So, so one of the, one of the scriptures that I found during this time and, and through kind of, I think, I think you might've done us around, uh, one time was Matthew 18, eight. Um, and Jesus is talking here and he says, if your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it to you because it's better for you to enter the life in heaven, um, maimed or crippled. Then, and you know, not have hands and feet, than to be you know, go to hell and have and be cast into fire. And so, and so that was that was interesting because I realized that I needed to be aggressive and and kind of I've heard the heard the analogy before of like a, a tree. You had to clip off the the dead limbs, all the bad limbs, and that way the the good stuff can grow more, right? Pruning. Thank you. I was trying. I knew someone would have that word. Um, so I needed to be aggressive with what I was doing, what I was saying, how I was acting. I just needed to cut it off. You know, I don't think I actually need to, you know, cut off my arm. Um, I, I would really hope not to have to cut off my arm. So, you know, if that's what it's going to take, then if we eventually get there, then maybe I'll have to. But we'll, you know, we'll get there. So, exactly, yeah. Well, I was also thinking that maybe I need to just, if my brain causes me to stumble, I'll just have to go get a lombotomy or something like that. Because um, that's often where it all starts is I think a lot, way too much often. Um, because <laughs> often when I was at Rose, I think one of the biggest, biggest stumbling blocks for me was I realized that I try to do things on my own with my own brain power. Um, I thought that I had to get to a place by myself that, um, so that way God could come in and, and work his, in his way in my life. I had to, but I had to be able to think through and solve all my own problems first, and then I could go all in with God, you know, and that's not, that's not what God tells us to do. He says, come broken, come, you know. 
and then I'll fix you, <laughs> and I'll make you better. <laughs> you don't have to do it by yourself. Um, and I think going to going to New Hope was was nice because some of the things that um, some of the things that he taught there was not the pleasant things, not the not the things that you want to want to hear. He was a little bit more aggressive as as a pastor. He said said a lot more things that kind of riled people up a little bit. And I was like. I think as a as a young guy, you know, I need to hear things that are are challenging. You need to hear the difficult stuff, because um, not a lot of people want to tell tell say the difficult stuff nowadays. You know, we want to be well, we want to be flowing in grace and accepting, um, but you you have to follow the, what what Jesus said to do. You gotta you gotta obey, and you gotta you gotta do the right things, um, and so that was that was interesting to me to to find out. Hey. You have to you have to follow what he says, and you have to know what he says by reading what he says. Um, so, let's see. Um, so this whole process uh, did not happen overnight. Um, trying to cut out all the bad things, I realized that the trying to get to a point to where I was good enough to just transform my whole life and and wake up one morning and then never go back waiting on that day was not not the that's not the move you need to wake up every day and decide that hey today i i serve jesus and i'm gonna follow god and i need and i need god today um and don't worry about if tomorrow like don't don't worry about the the future because that can be stressful to think about the entire rest of my life i'm going to live this way um then you would just put it off. Like, that's what I do. That's how I procrastinate. Um, I don't want to think that way anymore. I'm going to wake up every day and think, think today, just for today, that's all I have to worry about is wake up and choose God. So now I'm going to veer off because this was a separate kind of more fun revelation I got. I went to a, I went back to Rose this summer for a weekend. We went to a Nike cross-country camp. And while we were at this camp, you know, it was fun being back with everybody. Um, and one of the, we, we were just staff members for all these high school runners that came up, uh, high school and middle school runners. There was a kid there, he was like seventh or eighth grade, and they were, I mean, they were crazy runners. They were amazing. Um, and so one of the, one of the motivational things, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of David Goggins. Um, he was a, a former Navy SEAL, and he is, um, he's now a public, public speaker. You don't have to go look him up. He, he's very, uh, intense. Um, it has a lot of choice, colorful language, but you know he's he's a former Navy SEAL, so you know that's that's how they they talk. Um, but one of the things he says is he says, "Who's going to carry the boats?" Um, and, and so that was our, our kind of our motivation through the whole camp was was who's going to carry the boats? Um, and and it was actually pretty it was pretty motivating. You know, I turned it on, turned it on um, there or like we would uh, we were getting done with this this eight mile run or something like that. Um, me and me and one of my buddies where we were trying to finish up, we were like, we gotta go. Like we were, we were just gonna do seven miles, and we get to that seventh mile, and we're like, who's gonna carry the boats? And so we did an eighth mile, and we just we were rocking it out. Um, but after I got back from that camp, you know, I realized uh, I had a, had a realization. I was like, I don't need to carry the boats. God can carry the boats. And so I was I was. <laughs> Abby's laughing because I I annoyed her very uh, a lot. <laughs> Not anymore, not anymore, but it was very motivational for a period of time. Um, I realized that I don't have to do it on my own. I can depend on God um, to do it, and so, um, wow. So all I needed was, um, so I want to need God all the time. Right? When do we need God? I want to need God all the time. I want to need him when I wake up in the morning and go about my day. Whenever I'm um, going to a new location, a new place, I want to be able to have enough confidence in myself to just say no, no to things that are socially, um, like if you're, if, you know, we going to, to Louisville and moving in there. I have, have an apartment down there. I got three roommates, um, and so you know, whenever you're trying to meet all these new people, it's it's pretty common to want to fit in. You want to you want to be together and and you know be accepted by all these people. Um, I want to need God to be able to, to branch off from these people and say, hey, here's why I'm drawing the line. I'm still going to be, be who I am and be who I am in Christ. Um, 
And so I did not write this one on the list because it's right behind me. Um, draw close to God, and he will draw close to you. Um, if you need, you don't need to, to try to get, become perfect. All you need to do is just get closer to God, and he'll just get closer to you. And eventually, you're going to be right there. <laughs> you know, um, One of the things that I, I really enjoyed listening to the ARM conference um, sermons this summer. Um, I think Mark Pfeiffer had a whole, his whole thing, uh, or one of his sermons was about alignment and aligning what you're, you're good at and what your talents are with the goodness of God and what God's will for your life is and putting those two things in alignment, and then you can be this absolute powerhouse. Um, and so I, I realized, hey, you know, this is where I need to be. I need to be aligned with what God wants me to be, um, and then I can, can succeed and do all the great things. So I think that's just about all I had. <laughs> that's a lot, though. <laughs>